uh, said this, the government is spending more than any other, six billion a year by the end of this parliament, to make sure that more families than ever before mm -hmm. have help with their childcare needs. Mm -hmm. It also said after consultation with childcare providers, it's increasing funding for the programme by £300 million per year. 21 minutes past six. Now, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton have both won their presidential primary nom nominations in New York. The victory means that both are firmly in the lead for their respective parties. It seemed for a while Donald Trump had talked himself possibly out of favour for Republican voters after a series of gas. Well, joining us live now from California is David Wall, who's worked with Donald Trump on his campaign. Welcome to you, David. Hi, Piers. How are you? Well, it's, it's, fascinating. it's been a be fascinating few weeks. Most notably, I think, not so much for the odd gaffe by Donald Trump as this far more disciplined, dare I say it, safe, moderate version of Donald that we're now seeing. Is this deliberate and is it working? Well, it is deliberate and it is working. I mean, tonight he had a huge victory in New York, more than 60 percent of the vote, 90 delegates. Right now, he's basically a sledgehammer who is transcending party politics and basically has become the blue collar billionaire who's re really struck a chord with everyday Americans who ordinarily you wouldn't think would relate to someone like him. But his, his support, his momentum is building um, in, in a huge way. And I think uh, his gaffes have been overcome, basically. You know, well, bottom you line. Sorry, you sorry you just you say his gaffes have been overcome, but of course, yesterday we were reporting a very unfortunate gaffe where he calls 9 11. 7-Eleven. Now, you know, that, mm -hmm. it, it seems an extraordinary mistake to make. Well, Susanna, it's that type of slip of the tongue, which is what it was, which reminds people that he's human, that he's an ordinary guy despite his immense wealth and his political popularity. And people, believe it or not, people really like that about him. It was an unfortunate gap. There's no question about it. But it's something that humanizes him. And it's something that keeps him in that in that focus where Barack Obama seems like such an elitist compared to him. And that has increased his popularity in this vote, believe it or not. Uh, David, let's turn to Hillary Clinton as well. She's had a very big win in New York. We could actually now have uh, a face off for the presidential race between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, both New Yorkers. That hasn't happened since 1944, I think, in American history. Um, how significant was last night for Hillary in really crushing Bernie Sanders in New York? Well, it was a significant win. There's no question about that, Piers. And the question now remains whether or not Bernie can actually come back at all uh, as far as the number count goes. But remember this. Hillary Clinton is facing this email server scandal. Uh, the FBI has now extradited a Romanian national who apparently hacked into one of her associates' email accounts which may have compromised top secret or classified email information. Now, people seem to be writing off the possibility that she could be indicted in this federal investigation, but there's almost 150 FBI agents now looking into this. It's far more serious than people believe. And so she's got this hanging over her head. Now, she has immense political popularity being from the Clinton family, but this is something that's going to be very serious and something that she has to take very seriously. It's something that Donald Trump is going to go to town on. Well, he Rest said, assured, he's, he's, he's going to make a big deal out of this. Right, he certainly will. I mean, putting that to one side, and I mean, if she's indicted, it's obviously a sensational story, and that could still happen. She's adamant it won't. Mm -hmm. Putting that aside, you know, it, we could now see a clear battle between the two biggest stars, really, of this entire race, Trump and Clinton. It's irresistible, isn't it? From a media perspective, all you guys over there must be licking your lips at what would become one of the all-time great punch-ups. Well, it's been an extraordinary political season, like none I've ever seen. And I've been voting since Ronald Reagan's uh, first election in 1980. There's been nothing to compare to this at all. But the interesting thing now is that you have Hillary Clinton, who's basically saying, in essence, that she wants to continue Barack Obama's policies. And you have Donald Trump turning the card upside down, saying, I am going to go after ISIS and smash them. I'm going to carpet bomb them out of existence. It won't take long. I'm going to protect our southern border. I'm going to bring jobs back that have fled the country. And so he's turning things upside down to the extent that people are saying, you know what? We're tired of the last seven years. We're tired of the appeasement mentality. We're tired of policies where we'll do it as long as it doesn't offend someone. He's the politically incorrect politician that basically has captured the hearts of America. So I think Hillary Clinton is going to have a big problem momentum-wise 
uh, when the race does boil down to those okay, two, as you yeah. say, Peter, David, as I think it will. Good to talk to you. We'll talk to you again as the battle goes on. Uh, Hillary will probably contest some of your comments there. Yes. Uh, I think right. it's fairly obvious which side you're batting for. But, um, <laughs> but you know, it's going to be one hell of a race. Isn't it just... uh, and I think it's, it's really... You cannot under or overstate, I think, the excitement is building about a battle between Trump and Hillary Clinton. The, Can I just say that in a, in a poll, 36% of Republican voters mm. in New York said that they would be concerned or scared if Donald Trump became president. That's 36% of Republicans. But he's likely to People have won. from his own party. Right, but he's likely to have won A New third. York. Yeah, but he's likely to have won New York by 60% uh, vote, which is absolutely gigantic. It's and so those who wrote... voters saying they're scared if you become president. But anyway... He's a, but he's a, he's a polarising figure. Yes. Uh, particularly within his own party. That's definitely he's a, true. He's not a conventional Republican. That's what makes him interesting to the electorate. Let's um, turn our attention to the monarchy here. It may be the Queen's 90th birthday tomorrow, but it's her great-grandson who's managed to steal the show. This photograph, released overnight, shows four generations of the royal family with little George perched proudly on a pile of foam holding his father's hand. This historic image will be used on special stamps to mark the Queen's birthday. Well, Nick Dixon is in Windsor for us this morning. Very good morning to you, Nick. Well, it's a fabulous photograph. And uh, what has the photographer said about it? Morning to you, Susanna. Yeah, really fantastic photograph. But George in particular looking very cute with his little side part and standing